So it's time to do the last case of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Oh, welcome back guys, it's Raw Geek here. Yes, this is the case of the mystified murderess. So let's do it. Let's play. Let's finish this game up. Society burglar strikes again. Ooh. Ooh, series of burglaries. Six over the period from June 2nd to June 17th. Okay. July 2nd, the 7th occurred at the home of Sir Sanford Meads. Cleopatra Tiara stolen, says. As in the other cases, uh, no sign of extensive search by the thief, and only one piece of jewelry involved. Victims elsewhere at the time. Here's a complete list of the particulars, Holmes, if you'd care to read it. I believe you'll find them in the study. Oh, How do you do, this? gentlemen? Oh, hello. I am Gerald Locke. Please be seated, Mr. Locke. How can we be of service? Three days ago, Guy Clarendon was found murdered at Halliday's. It's preposterous. But Miss Frances Nolan has been charged and is being detained at the criminal court, Old Bailey. Frances Nolan? Ah, yes. Sister of Loretta Nolan. Only surviving heirs of Sir Malcolm Nolan, founder of the Aberdeen Navigation Company. No, no, no. I seem no. to recall that Sir Malcolm and Lady Nolan were killed when some lunatic threw a bomb into their carriage. It seems to me that later I heard something about it being a case of mistaken identity. Wasn't one of their little offspring in the carriage with them at the time? Yes, it was Loretta, Francis's sister. She was only four. Miraculously, she was uninjured. Mr. Locke, I've heard that you are a suitor for Miss Francis Nolan's hand, are you not? Yes. And was it not also true that she was being courted by Guy Clarendon? Unfortunately, yes. Have you any idea why Francis Nolan was charged with the crime? Ah, uh, well... She was discovered over the body with a pistol in her hand. Ah. That would do it. Yeah. But you don't understand. Francis is totally incapable of murder. Not even of a scoundrel such as Guy Clarendon. Scoundrel? But he's from such blue blood. Also, if I'm not mistaken, he's an accomplished batsman for the West London Cricketeers. A ranked fencer in international competition. He was also a bit of a bounder, Watson. <laughs> what an understatement. Guy Clarendon was excessively fond of cards and strong drink. His father had all but disinherited him. Oh. I tried to tell Francis that Clarendon was no good, but to no avail. And now look at the mess she's in. Will you help? Most certainly. Oh, of course, the game is a foot. Okay. Um, right, so. Clarendon. I question why we have come to this location. If clues are what we are seeking, then we are in the wrong place altogether. Why? He was the one mur- what? Surely uh, he might have someone not working there. Okay, so we see Francis then. Like, just let me talk to someone. This is a difficult thing for a man to say about his only son. But Guy was a wastrel and a ne'er-do-well. Only okay. a short month or so ago, I gave him five thousand pounds and told him that was the last he'd see of my money. I'd hope the shock five thousand pounds around, make him realize he had to settle down instead of wasting his life on gambling and gallivanting around with that wild woman. Which wild uh, woman was who's that? that? Loretta Nolan, of course. Ah. You mentioned gambling, Sir Francis. Have you any idea with whom he gambled or who might have wanted to kill him? I wish I did. He told us nothing. He only came around when he needed money. When I told him there'd be no more, we never saw him. Just oh. about broke his mother's heart. <laughs> there, there, Gertie. We still have one another. <laughs> Moments later. <laughs> I've something you ought to know about Master Guy. Okay. One morning, rather early, about four or five weeks ago, I heard a terrible clatter downstairs, so I came down to investigate. It was Master Guy just coming home. He was in a terrible state, all battered and bruised, with a fresh mm. cut on his forehead. I asked him who did it to him, and he wouldn't say. I think he was afraid for his life. Dun-dun-dun! Okay. 
the Nolans. Tell us, who was at home on the evening of the first? Well, just Miss Francis, sir. Oh, yes, of course, and Dr. Trevelyan. Trevelyan. What time did the doctor take his leave? Oh, let me think. It. Oh, it must have been 10 o'clock, because that's what time he always leaves. What did Miss Francis do after her guest left? What she does every evening, sir. Well, she asked for a cup of hot cocoa, which I brought her straight away. Oh, that's cute. And then she read for a bit by the fire. Later, when I went up to bed, I passed her room and the light went out. What time would that have been? Oh, let me see. Oh, I know it was 11.30 because the clock chimed. Then I went to sleep. Later, I was awakened in the middle of the night, right in the midst of the most peculiar dream. You mm -hmm. see, I was barefoot and trying to buy a pair of shoes as and... As fascinating I... as all this is, could we get back to what it was that awakened you? Oh, yes, of course. Well, it was something that I heard. Or thought I heard. I listened for a bit. But that was the end of it, so I went to sleep again. Later, I awoke at 7.30. I always wake up at 7.30, except, of course, on Sundays when I sleep until 8. Ooh. As usual, I began to prepare Miss Francis's breakfast. I had no sooner gotten to the kitchen when I heard the front door open and close. Well, I ran to the front window and peeked out, and there was Miss Francis walking down the street. And mm. why do you deem that so unusual? Well, she never leaves before she's eaten one of my currant buns. Ah, the currant buns, they did it. Let's talk to the other Nolan. Or see who they're there. Enter and be oh, recognized. Hello. <laughs> oh, you don't wish to play Her Majesty, eh? Jeez. Hello. Why is she dressed like that? Very well. <laughs> You do not seem particularly disturbed by the recent turn of events, Miss Nolan. Each of us grieves in his own way, Mr. Holmes. It must be difficult for you to face the possibility that your own sister may have killed your dearest chum. Guy was fun to be with. And as for Frances... She did it! I love her dearly, but, well, it's funny to think Miss Right and Proper has finally gotten herself into... She's the murderer. Miss Nolan, may I ask, when was the last time you saw Guy Clarendon? Let me think. I believe it was the Richmond's party last Thursday. Yes, I'm Richmond's. sure of it. God, we did cut it up a bit there. <laughs> and after the party? We did not go home together, if that's what you're implying. That would have broken Francis's heart. She was head over heels for Guy, you know. She had some foolish notion that he was going to marry her. Not that someone like him ever would. But I do recall her saying, and it might have been the night of his death, that she was going to have a talk with him about their future. Oh, the plot thickens. Did she murder him during the talk? I reckon she did it. Uh, who was your person? Trevelyan? Dr. Trevelyan? Doctor, we understand that you dined with Francis Nolan on the evening of July 1st. Yes, that is correct. We dine every Sunday. Her sister Loretta has been under my care for some ten years. First at the Mesmer Braid Institute and then in private practice. Mesmer? Without breaching Hypnotism. the physician-patient protocol, would you mind telling us the nature of her illness? She never quite recovered from the overwhelming trauma of watching her parents being blown to bits. I quite understand. As is often the case with young orphans, they tend to create fantasies about their parents. Miss Loretta Nolan truly believes that her father was the King of England, making her a princess. Do you think her unconventional behavior Coo -coo. stems from that fantasy? Absolutely. As a princess, she believes she can do no wrong. I must say that she's worlds apart from her sister Frances. Do you know Frances Nolan well? Yes, rather. Through my treatment of her sister, I've known her for years. Let me say that it is difficult to believe that Miss Francis is capable of murder. She has a quiet, unassuming personality. An act of such a confrontation would not be at all in keeping with her character. Mm. Were Loretta and Francis close? I know without a doubt that Miss Francis loves and cares for her sister almost as a parent would a child. 
Miss Loretta. Well, she loves her sister as much as she is capable of love. Some major issues with Loretta's brain. Mesmer was mentioned, which is hypnotism. Okay, I can't talk to them. Uh, Richmond's. Is that who we want to talk to? What? Oh, parties. Yeah, okay. Let's go here. Ah. At first, I thought it must have been one of the servants. After all, there was no sign of a search, and nothing else was disturbed. Did you question them? Thoroughly, but none of them would admit a thing. It really wasn't until Hardinge and Bessie Durth were robbed, and the newspapers Hardage. referred to us as victims of the society burglar that I was certain it wasn't any of my staff. Society by the way, burglar. Can you recommend a good housekeeper and valet? Uh, no. No, I can't. I've got stuff to do. So, Har Hardinge? Was that what you said? Hardinge? Oh, is that anything to do with anything? My wife and I were guests at a small dinner party at the home of Otis Richmond. We arrived home sometime after midnight. And as my wife was putting away her finery, she noticed the bracelet was missing from her jewelry box. Oh, been and we summoned the police immediately. The servants were questioned. Oh, they've all been with us for a number of years, and I haven't the slightest suspicion about them. But yes, the police did question them thoroughly. All were in Wasn't bed them. asleep by the time we arrived home, and none heard anything untoward. And nothing else was taken? Surprisingly not. Yet you are positive that the bracelet has not simply been misplaced? No, my wife actually put it on while she was preparing for the evening, and then she decided against it. I saw her put it back in the box. Where does mm. she keep the box? In her dressing table, there's a special compartment in the side of it. The box mm. fits in rather neatly. Who would have known about that? What, what do I do now? Last time there was stuff at the hotels, but that was just a fluke. Should I do that now, or should I wait until there's a reason to? Let's look at the um, newspaper about these crimes or whatever. Uh, marriages, burglaries could cease. Oh, after high profile burglaries, perhaps blah, blah, blah. That's the increased police presence in the city's neighborhoods brought to an end. It's oh, not helpful. Cholera, deaths, personals, eight pound reward, necklace. That didn't really help. Okay, um, let's get this one. Burglaries. Every time, sir, the press and blah, 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 blah. Any person committing a burglary or robbery from a person accompanied by violence brutality be flogged. <laughs> oh, they want public flogging of these people. Um, okay, that's just that. Right, death doesn't matter, right there. Jewel was stolen. The jewels of the Duchess of Oldenburg were stolen from the Residence Schloss late last uh, yesterday afternoon. Helmut. Oh, they have detained. Okay. Helmut Schnitzel, Schnitzler, and Thomas O'Neill. Schnitzler. O'Neill. They're not going to be around to talk to, are they? That was silly of me. Uh, let's go back here. Nope, let's not go there. Let's get newspapers. What they say? Uh, Oldenburg. Heidenschloss. Oldenburg. No. Nope. No, okay. That didn't help. Okay, um. Personals, lions murdered again. Idiots. 
Society burglar, here we go. Take climbs to 14 grand. The elusive and so far successful burglar, commonly known as the Society Burglar, has gotten away with jewels valued at 14,000 British pounds by seven victims to date. Speculation continues to the identity of the burglar. The other striking aspects of the modus operandi. Each piece of time happens when the victim's not at home. So he would have had to know something about these high society types of when they'd be in and out at parties and stuff. So he probably knows them. So it was every couple of days, really. Three days, three days, three days for that. 1st July. What's the date now? Diamond Tiara was the last thing. The date is currently what? Well, it's at least July the 4th. So isn't isn't one due if he's going at the same rate? So why have they stopped? Is it because that's so much money? He's got enough for now? Is it because he's dead? That guy was killed... His father cut him off. Uh, it could have been that guy. What was his name? Clarendon. Jack Ripper. White Chapel visited again by Jack Ripper. Oh, wow. But it wouldn't have been him, but. I reckon Clarendon's the thief. That doesn't really help me with anything though, does it? Um, what do I do? What should I do? Who should I talk to? I don't know if he'd care about anything. I don't know if they would help me really. Uh, what were notes have I got? Lock? Did I talk to this person? Lock? Mm. Ah, yeah, let's talk to this person. We have just a few more questions for you, Mr. Lock, if you don't mind. Oh, of course not. Anything to help Francis. We were wondering if you could shed okay. some light on Miss Francis' relationship with Guy Clarendon. He was only after her money. I, I reckon he's a thief. Francis as much, but she wouldn't hear of it. We had a bit of a row over it. I've been quite upset about the whole thing. Upset enough to commit murder? Huh. What an outrageous accusation. There's only a question, Mr. Locke. Preposterous. Besides, I've been on holiday all week, playing cribbage at the annual tournament up at Leeds. Sounds positively riveting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, what fun! What what? Um, oh, so now I don't know who to talk to. Uh, the bank help at all? Don't see why they would. Cox and Company Bank. Why is that now there? Oh, I didn't. Uh, I've not seen this before. Mr. Clarendon oh. appears to be a frequent depositor. Yes, but it looks as if he's afraid the money will oh, pull in his bank book if he leaves it in too long. Then those amounts match. Why can I not look at that longer than that? I reckon those are matching amounts from the uh, stuff. He's obviously selling it. Is there a jewellery store or a pawn store or something? Halliday's private hotel. What is that? Should I go? Should I check these places out? Okay. Okay. Got nothing from visit. Okay. Presumably they'd say something if it was important. Oh, your bloke registered under the name of Clarence Guy. May told me she found bits of plaster ceiling on the carpet in his room. Oh, let's go here. Ooh. Clarendon, poor chap. He arrived on the 29th day of May and was given a front room on the third floor. 
Two days later, he asked to be moved to suite 205. To your knowledge, did he Why? have any visitors? Only two that I'm aware of. One was a most disagreeable fellow. Who's this? He was rather large, had a thick walrus moustache, and a very prominent scar down his cheek. Who's that? He arrived on the 1st of June, well, the very day of Mr. Clarence. He's flogging the goods. He simply came in, sat down in the lobby, and waited. Twenty minutes or so later, Mr. Clarendon came down from his room. The big man yanked him aside. I was about to send for a bobby when Mr. Clarendon signed me that all was well. After a few minutes, they left together. I never saw the man again. His other visitor, who came by quite frequently, was a most striking woman. She was quite fashionably dressed. She had a most distinctive laugh, very full and deep. I've no idea who she was. Please, uh, tell us about the morning of July 2nd. It was about nine o'clock when a woman entered. She was rather plain looking and I wouldn't have noticed her, except for the fact That's that she came the front door, <laughs> looking neither left nor right, and proceeded directly up the staircase. It couldn't have been more than 30 seconds later when I heard a bang, followed by a woman's scream. I dashed upstairs to the second floor. The door to room 205 was open. Inside, I found the body of Mr. Clarendon and ah. the woman who'd just come up. She was lying in a swoon in the center of the room with a pistol in her hand. I revived her with some whiskey. When she came to, she was totally disoriented. She had no idea where she was or what she'd done. Hmm. When she saw Clarendon's body, she let out a shriek and dropped the pistol. I summoned the police. Hypnotize. Tell me, at what hour are the hotel's front doors locked? Oh. Ten o'clock, sir. Anyone who arrives after that has to be let in by the night staff. Of course, Mr. Clarendon was never one of those. He was always in his room before ten. May we see his room? She was hypnotized to kill him. What are oh. we here, Watson? Appears to be a bank statement. We saw that already. Well, look here, Holmes. How did I see that before getting to it? Sweeping. Good thing she did, Watson. You're staring at evidence. Hmm. Blood. What's this stain here? Smells like a fine sherry. Looks like someone's been celebrating. The question huh. is, was it with the body or over it? Nothing much here. A couple of shirts and three pair of shoes. But what you fail to notice, my dear Watson, is that one of the pairs of shoes is canvas and has been dyed black. Interesting. A sweater and trousers. An ensemble in black. He's the thief. Not much of a view. All I can see is a brick a wall of building across the alley. Hmm. Ivy Vines binding up a trellis. So he can climb in and out of the, ho the, the hotel, that's why he asked to move there. So he can make himself seem like he's in from 10, but actually he's out robbing people. So Guy Clarendon's definitely the thief. He was killed by Francis, was it Francis? But I think it sounds like she was hypnotised, which sounds a bit crazy, but that is a kind of thing that happens in Sherlock Holmes sometimes. So, who hypnotised her? Or how? Why? Where do I go next? Hmm. Um, I haven't got any other names written down. Leads. The tiara was a terribly valuable oh. piece of jewellery, and it meant so much to my wife. 
She has been under a doctor's care since the theft. In fact, just yesterday, she took a room at the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is she prone to bouts of nervousness? Mm, perhaps lately it seems so. She was absolutely undone when young Clarendon poured champagne on the bodice of her gown at Richmond's party. Come to think of it, what an idiot. that was the last time she wore her tiara. Oh, he did it she so she'd so take it off. Of it. And several of the ladies at that party admired it openly. Where did Lady Leeds keep the tiara when she wasn't wearing it? In the bottom drawer of her bureau, where she kept some of her more frilly undergarments. Were there any signs of a search? Drawers left open, that sort of thing. No, and that's what strikes me as so peculiar. It's as if the burglar knew right where to look. Yes. Hospital. Where's hospital? How do I go to the hospital? Or is it okay not? Is it not matter? How do I talk to that guy with the scar? Where, where is he? Oh, pawn shop. I question why. Okay. Uh, right, so she asked some of these people then. Let's just again. Times. Could talk to him. He's never any help at all. He doesn't help on anything. <laughs> as though Guy and Loretta, the terrible twins, will afflict us no more. Loretta must be desolate, what with the loss of a kindred spirit and fellow prankster. Prankster? Well, yes, quite good Original fellow. prankster. I'll never forget the time. Clarendon poured champagne down the front of Lady Leeds's new Paris gown for the sole purpose of Loretta's amusement. I would think she must also be distraught at the loss of her lover, not to mention the imprisonment of her sister. Well... I'm not sure about Loretta's feelings toward her sister, but I do know that Guy and Loretta were not lovers. Though outwardly they made an excellent couple. He, tall, handsome and from a moneyed family, and she, beautiful, and an heiress in her own right. Yes, it would have been a match made in heaven. But it was a match made in far hotter regions, I suspect. Francis claims that she and Clarendon were engaged to be married. Well, that's hard to imagine him being who he is, or was, as it were. Why do you say that? Well, Guy Clarendon was not at all a desirable sort. He'd all but been disowned by his own father for his compulsive gambling. The utter disregard for other people's money is probably what drew Clarendon and Loretta Nolan together in the first place. After all, she had managed to fritter away almost her entire fortune, unlike her sister Frances, who still had her inheritance, if not her honor, intact. Oh, that explains it. What are you driving at, Holmes? From all I've heard of Clarendon, I suspect his interest in Francis was directed toward her sizable bank account. Yes. But who killed him? And why? Well, he... Okay. Hmm, okay. Uh, now, where was the...
Where, where was the all the thefts? Where are all the thefts? Oh, here we go. Oh, Baker, Hardin, Stun Hardin, Stun Richmond, Lewin. Okay, Baker, Lewin, Durf, Judd, Baker. Done Baker yet? Baker's not there. Uh, Lewin. Oh. We were at a reception at Buckingham Palace for the new head of the China delegation. Upon arriving home, my wife discovered that her favourite ruby earrings were missing. We noticed nothing else out of place. No sign of a search, that is. And none of the servants had heard anything suspicious. Oh. Something up with it. Judd. Judd, 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 Judd. Judd. It's oh. all quite upsetting, Hello? you know. The pendant belonged to my great-great-grandmother, and I was hoping to pass it on to my daughter. And now it's gone. There, there, Mrs. Judd, you mustn't <laughs> worry. With Holmes and I on the case, we're sure to recover your pendant. Uh, by the way, where did you keep it when you weren't wearing it? In the toe of my old black button-ups. And I don't recall ever having mentioned that to anyone. Or at least I don't think I did. Hmm, except maybe when you were drunk or something. Who's that person? The score's going mental again. How are you supposed to... It, it wants you to not watch any of the videos. It wants you just to send the irregular. That's boring. Lewin Durth. Leeds, done Leeds. Death. Death. My husband, God rest his soul, gave me that necklace for our 50th wedding anniversary. And woe betide the blighter that took it, I say. Yeah, I certainly sick. understand your consternation, madam. May I assume that you were out the evening it was taken? Oh, yes. The house was completely empty. Sybil, my housekeeper, and I were attending the mass charity ball at St. Mary's for the benefit of unwed mothers. It wouldn't surprise me if that scoundrel was responsible in that direction as well. A society burglar, indeed. He's of the lower classes, mark my words. Do you keep your jewels locked up? Oh, I keep them in a very secret place. A box made to look like a copy of Great Expectations on the bookshelf amidst the other books. Hiram, my late husband, thought of that. But the thief went right to it. Oh no. That's it, St. Mary's. Where was that? I'm sure you could go to that before, it's weird that. Oh, have I gone there? It oh. appears as though Guy and Loretta, the terrible twins, will afflict us no more. Oh. Loretta must be desolate, what with the loss of a kindred spirit. Done that. Um. Where's St. Mary's Hospital? It's weird. Hospital there. You're oh. quite sure the murder weapon was a small caliber pistol. Oh yeah, quite. talk to that guy. I'd also wager to say he'd been shot at very close range. Yes, so it must have been Tell that us, woman. Sir Jasper, at what time did you receive the body? Uh, around uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. And how much time would you judge to have elapsed from the time of the murder? Well, it's always difficult to be precise in these matters, but I'd venture to say he'd been dead anywhere from four to ten hours. Oh. So it might not have been her that did it. She might have been... So someone might have killed him before, hypnotised somehow. Uh, what was her name? The other girl who's currently in prison. What was her name? I can't remember. 
um, to go there, discover the body, and be like, ah, I don't know, seems a bit far-fetched, but maybe. Aberdeen Navigation. How do I know what's useful to look at? Yeah, he's at least been at least dead four hours, so she couldn't have been the person that killed him. Or at least she wasn't at that point. Yeah, she's been programmed to go there, I think. Oh, big click. Um, mystified look, she's been hypnotized. Hmm. Legal records. Come in. Oh, let's have a look at this guy. Sure, I remember Clarendon. Ah. He and his lady friend used to stop in here from time to time. Usually on their way to Kilgore's gaming parlor or coming back Kilgore. from it. Rumor has it. Clarendon was in to kill Gore for a sizable sum. Ah. Do you happen to know how much? Seven thousand pounds was the figure I heard. Got to the point Kilgore wouldn't allow him in the door. That's that guy. Clarendon made a big fuss till Gus Bullock stepped in. Clarendon Gus back down Bullock. pretty quick. Bullock. Don't Bullock. blame him none. Nobody in their right mind would want to mess with the likes of Gus. Do you think Bullock was involved in the murder? Bullock. Nothing you could tell me about that bloke could surprise me. Anyways, Kilgore makes it clear to Clarendon that he wants his money. Then, a month or so later, Clarendon comes in all smiles. And he and Kilgore get on like chums. Hmm. Figure Clarendon Pay must have off. paid him back. Then, Calvin Leach steps into the picture. Leech. Now, who's Calvin Leach? Leach deals in what you might call stolen property. Square dealer, too. Give you one half the value of the article. He bought the stolen what stuff. Leech have to do with Clarendon and Kilgore? Usually nothing at all. But there it is. Leech, Kilgore, and Clarendon meeting late at night just as thick as thieves. The meeting's Literally. on right up to... Well, the night before Clarendon's death. Very interesting. Now, we've been standing here jawing, and I don't recall hearing anybody order nothing. What'll it be, mate? <laughs> so Kilgore, that Bolt Bullock, whatever his name was, Gus Bullock. Who oh. Ryan, what do you want, Doctor John Watson, sir? I wondered if you might be kind enough to answer a few questions. About what? <clears throat> Guy Clarendon. <laughs> that Welchin little weasel. What about him? He's been murdered. Ah! I'd say he got what he deserved. And if you don't clear out of here in two seconds, so will you. Oh, right. Ta-ta. <laughs> kill Gore. So I don't think he was a killer because he seemed to genuinely not know that. And But yeah, be sort of kill Gore. Any luck? Yes and oh. no. I beg your pardon. Yes, Kilgore has met Clarendon once or twice. But no, he insists he'd never heard of Calvin Leach. And you believed him? Leach. What did you learn of Calvin Leach? I think Porky Shinville said it all. Did you ask Leach about Clarendon? Yes. What did he say, Watson? Oh, yes, of course. He said he'd never heard of him. <sighs> Liar. Well, we know they're lying. That's fine. So... Who killed him and why? I can't work out. It seems Sir Malcolm left his entire uh. estate to his wife, Margaret. If she should precede him in death... Or accompany him, as proved to be the case. Yes. Uh, then the estate was to be equally divided between his two daughters, Frances and Loretta. Uh. The estate included a one-third share in the Aberdeen Navigation Company. Aberdeen Navigation Company. Huh. 
Oh, so I can't look at the company now. Oh, that's strange. I saw something say Aberdeen earlier. Maybe not. Oh. Their father, Sir Malcolm, left the teacher one sixth share. Several years ago, as soon as she came of age, Miss Loretta divested herself of her stock. Oh, that was quick. Okay, thanks for that. Well, Watson. Will Alice see us now? Oh, there's no point for that, he's for it there. Uh, a barrister might help. He might help. Well, the Clarendon murders look fairly open and shut, if you ask me. Not your typical murder, as I admit, but there you have it. Oh, that was not helpful at all. Chemist. <clears throat> I say, excuse me, Dr. Murray. Oh, hello. What? Oh, my, I must have dozed off. Ah, it's you, Whitson. And what are you doing with yourself this afternoon? Or is it evening already? Have hmm. I missed my tea? It's Watson, sir. We're looking into the Clarendon case, and we were wondering... The Clarendon! Ah, I just finished that report when I dozed off. Ah, I see. It's useful. Number it's lucky. one, I believe. Ah, yes. Here it is. Hmm. Number 103. Clarendon guy. But not much, I'm afraid. A hole in the shirt where a small caliber bullet passed into the body. Yeah. Extensive blood stains. Uh, powder burns indicating a close range shot. Ah, here's something interesting. On the lower part of the shirt, I found traces of alcohol. Uh, wine, to be exact. Now, I have a good nose for this sort of thing, and I believe it to be an inferior quality Italian red. <laughs> right, okay. It's really helpful. Both Loretta Nolan and Guy Clarendon have had several complaints filed against them, although neither of them has ever been arrested. Both have been cited for public drunkenness. Likewise, both have been involved in some unusual pranks, but no one has ever pressed charges. Ah, oh, that didn't help. Mm. Oh, talk to them, talk to them, talk to everyone here, really. That matters. Ah, stop. Mm. Oh, I, wonder if I... I understand that Wilfred Robards is considering taking Miss Nolan's case. Wilfred Robards. He might be able to help you. If you'd like, I can arrange an interview with Francis Nolan. She's being held downstairs, you know. Robots. Oh, I can talk to her. We might be able to ah. help you, Miss Nolan, if you could just remember what happened that night in Mr. Clarendon's room. Well, that's just the trouble. I can't remember anything except seeing Guy's body across the room and the pistol in my hand. Where did you get the pistol? I've no idea, though the police assure me it's mine. I didn't know Guy was at Halliday's. I've never even been there before. And why would I shoot him anyway? We loved each other. There, there, Miss Nolan. He didn't love you. Stiff up a lip. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Stiff up a lip, Sir, that's a British way. What is the last thing you remember before the room at Halliday's? Oh, hot cocoa in bed. I beg your pardon? Oh, well, every night before I retire, my maid, Grace, brings me a cup of hot cocoa. How nice. Yes. And before that? Well, before that, I dine with Dr. Trevelyan, as I do every Sunday evening. The doctor. My sister Loretta is under his care. The doctor and I have become good friends over the years. He hypnotized her. He left at 10 o'clock, as he always does. May I ask, where did you first meet Guy Clarendon? 
the country estate of Cornelius Oldwine in March. My sister Loretta was attending a party there. I suppose things got a bit out of hand because it seemed she dived into a fountain. What? She caught pneumonia and I had to go and fetch her home. Guy was also at the estate and that's where we met. And he immediately began paying court to you? Oh, heavens no. Nobody seems to take much notice of me. I suppose that comes from having such a wildly attractive sister. That's why I was so surprised when he called a few weeks later. Because what's your money? Seen a great deal of each other. We went on long carriage rides, had picnic lunches. It was all quite lovely. And then on the 5th of June, he declared his love for me and asked for my hand in marriage. I was so happy. It's horrible. I killed him. How do you explain your presence at Halliday? Well, I can't. It's just like the other two times. You've had memory mm. losses before. <laughs> yes, twice in the past month. The first time I found myself atop a horse in Hyde Park with no recollection of how I got there. The last thing I remember was having lunch with my sister, Loretta. Then there I was, atop a chestnut mare. How peculiar. The funny thing is, I'm terrified of horses. You mentioned there was a second time. Yes, a few days later, I met with my solicitor, Hiram Davenport. Then the next Davenport. thing I know, I'm at the Newgate Street Station. I consulted my physician, Dr. Mason, and he was quite as baffled as Mason. I was. Mason. One last question, if you will. What is your relationship with Gerald Locke? Oh, Jerry. He's a dear old friend. Though I'm afraid we had a falling out of late. He said some very unkind words about Guy. So, Davenport. I reckon the doctor hypnotised her. Somehow. Davenport. So, sorry ah. to have kept you waiting, gentlemen. I assume you are inquiring about the Nolan girls. Yes, we are. How long have you been there, solicitor, Mr. Davenport? Actually, in practice, I am serving that function only for Francis. Loretta has not sought a word of my advice since she came of age and was able legally to get her hands on her trust fund. Had Loretta the presence of mind to follow my good counsel, I'm certain she would be in a far better financial situation today. Do you recall a meeting with Miss Francis last month when she blacked out? Well, I did have a very odd meeting with both Miss Francis and Miss Loretta several weeks ago. How so? Well, I wouldn't say she blacked out as such, but she did leave rather unexpectedly. We were in the middle of our discussion when I was called out of the office. I was gone not more than 20 minutes. When I returned, Miss Francis had a very strange look in her eyes. She mumbled something and promptly left. Miss Loretta laughed that very disturbing laugh of hers. And Trigger words. As well. Trigger there. And the Mason. Oh, there's no Mason there. Oh, there is. Tell us, Dr. Mason, have you determined the cause of Francis Nolan's blackouts? It's the strangest thing, really. But I examined her thoroughly and found nothing physically wrong. She could not recall receiving a bump in the head, nor did she complain of dizziness. All I could suggest that was perhaps she was overtired and prescribed rest. But it remains a complete mystery to me. That Trevelyan, whatever his name was, mentioned mesmer first of all. I clocked that straight away, which is hypnotism. So, uh, he, did he and Loretta do it? Loretta, they planned together, the doctor hypnotised her to frame her for the murder. Something like that. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but it seems you will... Okay. Must be close. Um... Why even trouble yourself with this one, Holmes? You believe Francis Nolan to be guilty? <laughs> guilty as a cat would swallow a canary. And on what do you base that brilliant deduction? Look, Francis Nolan claims not to have known that Clarendon was residing at Halliday's. Yet she proceeded directly to his room where she shot the bloke. 
She claims not to have owned a gun. Yet the gun found in her hand was purchased at S. Goff and the receipt had her name on it, for Christ's sake. No, that little S. lady will never see the light of day again. Oh, that might have actually been helpful for once. S. Goff. I think I saw that name. Uh, ah. S. Goff. Do you remember Ooh. a woman who came in recently and purchased a It was her sister, Ooh, dressed as a... In fact, I do, sir. We don't get women in here very often, especially not alone. And I particularly remember that one because she was so pretty and, uh... She looked like she really knew how to have a good time, if you'll pardon the expression. Do you remember her name? I should say I do. She repeated it twice whilst I was filling out the order form. Yeah. Seems like it was very important sister. to her that I get her name right. Yes, I'm she sure it was. Francis, nor uh, less, but it was her well, sister. Was Francis something or other, sir. It's her sister. Can I go to the judge now? The score's terrible again. Hear ye, hear Ooh. Ye. The Queen's Court now stands in order. Okay. Mr. Holt. I understand you've been looking into the murder of Guy Clarendon. That is correct, my lord. Uh, Would you be so yeah. kind as to tell the court who killed Mr. Clarendon? Certainly, my lord. Loretta. I see. And what was Loretta Nolan's motive for killing Mr. Clarendon? She wanted the tiara that he stole. Ah, uh, greed. Why the Pure not, not like the holidays? Now. Have you determined why she was hypnotized. Francis Nolan went to Halliday's? I have, my lord. Please inform the court. Not a sisterly thing to do at all. No. Is there anything else Guy you to to the court? Yes, my lord. I believe we've also... He was the burglar. Clarendon was straight from the upper crust. Why ever would he turn to a life of crime? His father cut him off. Killed Grace to a perfect debt. No, because he didn't know about the crime. No, I reckon it's just that. Well, ah. you've done an admirable job in resolving this mystery. Terrible score again. I'd it's impossible. You're on a par with just about any other armchair detective out there. <laughs> I would suggest, however, that you rethink this case again, thereby improving your sleuthing skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My word, dear Holmes. Perhaps we are in Shut the wrong up. business altogether. I think I will ring up the university immediately and see if we might enroll in a detective course. This is impossible, that score. Well, Watson, we should be very pleased with ourselves on this one. Yes, indeed, Holmes. Two cases solved for Scotland Yard, though I doubt that the Strahd will consider himself in our debt. Two? Yes, indeed. First you were there! <laughs> Clarence Watson! Was pounds in debt to the gambler Kilgore. Unfortunately, he was in his father's bad graces and he was flat broke. Do you hmm. suppose Kilgore sent Bullock around to rough Clarendon up? Good deduction, Watson, you're learning. That's why he moved into Halliday's, to escape Gus Bullock. And to pay off his debts, he took to burglary. Right you are. He acquired a black sweater, trousers, and a pair of black canvas shoes so as not to be seen or heard in the dead of night. He chose victims of his own class whose social comings and goings he knew well and whose homes he'd visited often. Mm. I still don't understand why, after he'd settled in at Halliday's, he changed rooms. Access. Scale the window. Vines. To be at the back of the hotel with a vine-covered trellis conveniently leading in and out of his bedroom window. Quite so. Positively clever of you. May I continue? Oh, please do. On the 1st of June, Bullock tracked Clarendon down and confronted him in the lobby. Clarendon paid him the five thousand pounds that was given to him by his father. He still owed Kilgore two thousand pounds, and that was the same evening the society burglar struck for the first time. So pleased you've been paying attention, Watson. Soon after that, Clarendon, Kilgore, and Calvin Leach, a known trafficker in stolen goods, were seen together. Notice, if you will, that one half the value of the first three society burglaries is equal to two thousand pounds. Half the value being the price normally paid by Calvin Leach for stolen goods. Notice also that this same amount is equal to the balance of Clarendon's debt to Kilgore. Fascinating. So with his new vocation, Clarendon now had an easy source of income. Quite so, as his succeeding bank transactions evidence. On the day after each of the next three burglaries, Clarendon made deposits. Everything went along swimmingly, and by June 30th, his debt was paid. 
But the tiara was what, stolen what? July 1st. Yes, Watson. Apparently, young Clarendon thought he'd found himself a new vocation. He might have lasted longer at it if he'd chosen something else to steal. Whatever do you mean, Holmes? Loretta Nolan's delusion that she was born of royal parentage proved to be his undoing. If she took it, how did she manage? No one saw her enter or leave. She came and went the same way Clarendon did, via the trellis. She was armed with a derringer purchased at Escorts in her sister's day. Clarendon returned from his night's work and poured two glasses of wine in celebration. That's when Loretta Nolan shot him and took the tiara. How wicked of her. Hmm. Not nearly as wicked as what she did next. What? She Frames went to her sister her. Frances's yeah. home and hypnotized her. She then proceeded to instruct her to go to Clarendon's room with the derringer and fire it into the ceiling. Incriminate her own sister? But why? Ah, if we could determine that precisely, we could start our own institute. Sick mind, no doubt. But tell me, Holmes, how did Clarendon know the precise locations of each of his victim's jewels? Excellent question, Watson. Although there is no clear-cut evidence for this, I can only assume that Loretta Nolan must have been in on it, too. The only way Clarendon could have known the locations of the jewels was if the victims themselves had told him where to look. Yep. None of them recalls having told anyone, but in fact they did tell someone. Who? Loretta Nolan. She managed to hypnotize each of the ladies whose jewels were stolen and got them to reveal the precise locations of the family treasures. And left them with no memory of having done so. Precisely. Astounding, Holmes. Uh, what's what? So there you go. So, yeah. The thing is, if you play it the first time, because you want to see the videos, your score is always going to be high. Because you can send in the regular and it's half your score for him to find out if there's some information there. But if you want to see the video, you've got to go as detectives, and that costs more points, so that doesn't help. So, you know, this score, this 55, is if you were to play it again, knowing the answer, <laughs> and then you might be able to get that. But if you want to watch it for the first time, you're going to get a bad score. So, I think that's a little bit harsh, still, you know, a little bit embarrassed, but I'm sorry about that. At least we can see the videos, right? <laughs> Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool, so hopefully you enjoyed that. That was the third and final case of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. There is like a sequel, I think maybe even three of these, I don't know, but uh, I'm not sure if they're easy to get hold of. This is on Steam. But anyway, that was pretty cool, I thought. So guys, if you like that, please click like. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you on the next video. And until then, remember, it's elementary. Okay, bye. Guys, if you're still here, you're awesome! Uh, but as you are still here, why not check out some of my other videos? Oh, and if you haven't already, please click subscribe. Laters, haters.